public figure. Yeah. And they're Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Sean Spencer. And I'm Tina Winter. And welcome to Let's Talk Football Breaking News. My dear Tina's uh, quarterback, quarterback, Mr. Let Him Cook Itself, Russell Wilson, has an interview with Brandon Marshall and uh, answers some interesting questions. We'll definitely get into all of that on this being Let's Talk Football Breaking News to Russell Wilson met with Brandon Marshall on his podcast. Um, and, and honestly, it's about an hour and a half interview. Tina, I, I personally, and I'm going to, I'm going to go first. I know you're personally invested <laughs> in this being a Broncos fan. Personally, I'm going to be very honest. My first impressions, Russell Wilson is trying to get me to vote for him to run for office. I mean, he says all the right things. It, it, it definitely brings that kissing babies, you know, my tally. You you could definitely feel it. Sean but, wasn't wrong about that comment. Right. <laughs> right. But but I and I and and I understand why. Listening to this interview, you start to see that, you know, he came from, you know, a little area in Richmond, Virginia, which is two hours from, you know, where I live, to to go to NC State and have to transfer to Wisconsin and, you know, make a name for himself, then get drafted, be the third string quarterback. They had just brought in Matt Flynn with the Seahawks and he had to take his job and do all these things. So he talks about how he was able to kind of start from the bottom and then get to this place. And, and he has to have, he has a certain image that he has to uphold. So I, I get those type of things. Um, for me, some of the things that he talked about, which I thought were interesting, where he kind of let us in, and I'll let you dive into this in a little bit, a little bit more, kind of the whole, the injury clause in his contract and how the Broncos approached him about potentially sitting and 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 this type of stuff to save money but at, at the same time this is in the midst of a five game winning streak it's a playoff teams and look you and i oh mm -mm, no they asked him to sit before the five game before, playoff right team. right before so because they were coming up and they didn't know then once they started winning they let it go right and then when they started losing again, right? That's when they then they asked him if he would renegotiate his contract. Or am I? No, they I'm sorry. The they part. asked him to renegotiate his contract before the winning streak started. But Sean mm -hmm. was already talking with administration about benching him at that point because right. they were not doing well. Nothing looked good at that point. And so then later the injury, once they lost again, they started losing again. Then they came up, then they said, Hey, will you waive your, your injury clause? Mm -hmm. I agree with him on the injury clause part. Mm -hmm. I don't think he couldn't say yes, because that would set a precedent for the rest of the league. True. Yeah. And so that's also why I think the NFL Association has filed is talking about filing a lawsuit on this because it would affect because if the NFL Players Association lets this go and the it becomes kind of an unwritten rule, it's going to mm -hmm. show up in all the contracts. Yep. They're just going to put it in there like if we're not winning by blah, 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 like blah, blah, blah time, you agree to waive your injury clause. Right. Because everybody needs to remember the injury clause is guaranteed money. Hmm. It's not something you can settle over the next three or four years. Mm -hmm. You get injured, you get that money. Now, what a lot of people don't know, and this is the one thing that kind of irritates me about some of the coverage on this. And I'm also going to preface this also with saying, like, people heard me on Roundtable. I've said mm -hmm. it before. Mm -hmm. I think Russell is a good or was a good quarterback. He's just not where he used to be. And he's not the quarterback that Sean Payton needs to run his system. That's just hmm. the way that it is. Yep. Um, but what a lot of people don't realize is that one, all this talk that's going on, Sean's saying, we're getting into, we're going to settle this in the next two weeks. 
he's getting an $85 million check from the Broncos. Right. Whether he gets cut or not. If he gets cut, he gets $85 million. So yeah. I personally think he did this interview as a way to try to rehabilitate himself for other yeah. teams to take a chance on him because now they can pay him a dollar right? and he could play for them and not care because like you said, yeah. he's wealthy. He's him and Ciara have a lot of money and all that. What people didn't realize is the, and this is what's behind the scenes. Like a lot of people are like, why did Denver give him the extension? Why did they give him a five-year extension before he played a down with them in regular season it's because he has a no trade clause in his contract right and part of the reason to get denver to part of the reason to get him to come to denver was denver agreed they had to agree that they would renegotiate his contract before the season start hmm. the commanders were in line with talking with him there was a few other teams that were in line with talking yeah. with him and they to them would not agree to that yeah so there's oh god oh i mean ask any other questions i mean it's one of these that i'm like each side i'm on like i don't blame him mm -hmm. for the season before because that was because someone sold the broncos a bill of goods well right. someone sold john elway a bill of goods that nathaniel hackett could run a team and run right. his offense without aaron Rodgers in it right. and none of his coaches could teach anything so i don't blame that i mean he also had russell put on 30 pounds yeah russell's not a big guy like no. he's a big, he's tall, but he's not like beefy, beefy. So 30 mm -hmm. pounds on him. He's, he's, he's not even that tall, honestly. <laughs> yeah. He's just stout, like, you know, he, you, know, yeah, but you I mean, know what? And at the end of the day though, and, and this is one of the things that I always like to see how other people talk about you. I like to hear how Marshawn Lynch talks about him. You yes. know what I mean? How Marshawn is yeah. like, look, I you know, might not dig everything he does, but the boy can ball. He can get out there and play. And, and Russell to me, is a lot of it is show, but it's also a lot of it is for real. Hearing about how when as soon as the Seahawks fired uh, Pete Carroll, Russell flew across country to go see Pete Carroll. That's mm -hmm. the kind of person he was. I mean, and, and you saw your team this year. That five-game win streak where you beat Minnesota, uh, KC, Green Bay, you know what I mean, uh, Buffalo, Cleveland. Sean Payton also dumbed down his system after mm. we started losing because Russell couldn't. This is this is where I get into. I think Pete Carroll knew what was going on mm. because he was willing to let w Wilson go. Yeah, and whatever reason that was, and yes, I agree with Tyler. Football is a business. It is, but remember too that. These are contracts between two parties. So each party is agreeing. And when you're at the level of a contract that Russell Wilson has, there's at least 20 lawyers on each side negotiating oh, this. So they yeah. all know what's going on. So Russell knew what was going on. He got paid. The Denver was willing. But here's the thing is that, and also we started winning because our defense got healthy. That's what he mentioned. Yep. A lot of people, you're, when your defense starts getting healthier, you're able to have the positions. But what ended up happening is that teams started, started to see, secondaries and the linemen started to see, who does Russell throw to the most? Who does he have the chemistry with? Because everybody knows with Russell, there needs to be a chemistry. There's mm -hmm. He's always had a great chemistry with his wide receivers. Court and Sutton, that's yeah. it. Judy and him never really kind of they connected a little bit, but not well, really, because in my opinion, Judy, I think, is more thinking about the yaks than he's thinking mm. about the catch hmm. because he jukes and he gets his way and he runs and he's phenomenal when he does that. But if you don't get the ball first, you right. can't do you gotta, any of that. You can't go anywhere without the ball. And and I'm, I'm glad you spoke on that because we mentioned that a little bit earlier, but. Judy's name was noticeably left out of this interview. He talked about Sutton. He talked about yeah. Javante Williams. I mean, 
you know, we know how great Judy was coming out of Alabama and how great he was supposed to be coming into the league. But you've seen this man firsthand. I have to ask the question, is Judy, is Jerry Judy a bust? No, I just don't think he fits in this system because I don't know if it's, I, this is where I was saying, like, I think Pete Carroll saw this. If you mm. look at the people that Russell was surrounded by when he was in Seattle, they were all pro bowl caliber tight ends and wide receivers. Mm. He had really good guys when he True. was there Baldwin. and uh. he never, um, he not really a middle of the, he's not a middle of the field passer. You, he doesn't do any of that. And Judy's one of those guys that he needs, I, I just, he had such potential. And I think in another team, he will be good, but him and Russ just never were able to connect to each other. And mm. then he started throwing some temper tantrums about not mm. getting the ball in certain games. And based on what Russ's persona and everything of what he does is he's not going to bad mouth anybody. He's not going to say anything bad about anyone. He'll actually back you up, but mm. he doesn't want to deal with, diva behavior yep. he wants everything to like you said the pr smile everything's yep. wonderful it's all this way we're just gonna move on it's let's ride let's just yep. go and that's that part of his personality which is shown so much in that interview is what really irritated the fans and irritated yeah. the press because yeah. they could not get him to give a real answer like that's that's what it says <laughs> and perna brandon perna who we talk about he points this out in the interview like brandon marshall gives him number of opportunities to change his answer yeah. on something we all know that happened and he was like nope nope that didn't happen that didn't happen mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's like no be real be yeah. real about why you didn't win that game okay and it, it's another thing that everybody it's like wilson's weird like he, games he's supposed to lose and everybody says he's bad. You look at his stats and they're actually good games. He's great at. You look at his stats and he's not that good. He's just, he just, I don't know. It's My personal opinion. If I was talking to him and if I was his wife, I'd be like, hang it up, hon. You got $85 million check coming to you. You don't mm. need to play again. Mm. But he wants those additional Super Bowls because as uh, happens with all these guys when they retire, they want to be uh, put into the NFL. Oh, yeah. And as you, you know, as uh, you go later in the year. Yeah. yeah well, like, yeah. yeah I mean. <laughs> yeah. No, no, he didn't. But, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and as, mean, you, as you go. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, it's just it. Uh, yeah, when Mahomes, when, every, when people like, after the game, we won, and they're like, oh, Mahomes had the flu. I was like, um, okay. Like, yeah. seriously. They, yeah, I know how, you how are you guys gonna win? didn't think. I, didn't, I know nobody thought my lovely little Broncos were going <laughs> to beat Kansas City this year. Yeah. But give me some props, okay? okay? Right, right. <laughs> now this, now this, the rich getting richer. This guy was known as the punt god a year ago. Unfortunately, had some false accusation upon him. His name has been cleared, mm -hmm. Matt Ariza. Now the Chiefs picked him up. If he still got it, that could be quite interesting. But listen, to wrap this whole thing about Russ, it, to your point, there's two two movies that immediately come to my mind. I feel like this is a roundtable moment, but uh, <laughs> number one, and, and I know you know this movie because you're you're a baseball fan. Um, um, the best, the best, um, the, the best double A baseball movie. What, oh, oh, major what league. That? No, major league. Yeah. Yes, but that's 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 the uh, major one. What is it? Uh, Bull Durham. Oh yeah, Bull Durham. Yes, when when you know when he's uh trying to teach the young kid all the right things to say, mm -hmm. and he's yeah. like, you know, hey, we're just happy to be here. We're just that's what I feel when I hear Russ. When I hear Russ, exactly oh, we're just happy to yeah. be here. We just we're just glad to be able to play this game that we love, and we just thank God for every. That's what I hear. That and mm -hmm. made you you hit the nail on the head too. Major League, but Major League Two, 
when uh mm-hmm. when he comes back and he's thinking about his career and he's not yep. the wild thing anymore he's now more buttoned up that's more of russ when he was with mm-hmm. seattle back in the day before sierra he was this guy that he reinvented the position everybody because mm-hmm. russ came the same around the same time rg3 came and everybody would say to RG, they all RG3, he just runs, he doesn't do it. Russ, he scrambles, he he extends the play. And and what Russ was able to do was exactly that. Reinvent extending the play and and also bringing a lot of well-known black quarterbacks. Now, I mean, that's we're 50% in the league now. So, mm-hmm. um absolutely like that, but you can definitely see Russ is he's playing the role and and the fact that he went on with Brandon Marshall who mm-hmm. you know very well, Brandon Marshall's history with the Broncos, oh, with the Bears. <laughs> yeah, hit Brandon Marshall in the Denver press did not get along at all. Yeah. It was another one that kept everything very close to the chest. He would not right. be honest with them about some things that were going on. And you and I have discussed this. Like There was some actual mental issues going on when he was right. playing with. He had a lot of problems. He was getting... He had run-ins with the law and everything, a lot of calls and stuff. But, Lord, that boy could run. Like, him and Cutler, he was, yeah. I wish Bronc- Bears fans could see those two in their prime, not on tape, but, like, in person. Like, Poorly. what that chemistry looked like. Because yeah. it was a thing of beauty to see. Like, 40-yarder, 50-yarder, at least oh, yeah. four, three or four times a game. So I love Brady Marshall, but he, he he's had his own issues and he's, yeah. I liked seeing that he did the interview with Russ because yes. he was saying, Hey, I had problems too in this town. Come talk to me. Yeah. That's ex- I was not trying to, yeah. I wasn't like wanting to go into all the issues, but yeah, he, he Brandon Marshall is bipolar and he had a lot of run-ins him, a couple of girlfriends, things like that. It all kind of happened. But Brandon was also like kind of make trying, at least like I said, trying to get Russ to be open, to be honest, to like right. show behind the mask. That's the thing is like he's always got this mask on no matter yeah. what it is. It's always the same. He's always at a podium. He is so PR ready. It's unbelievable. It's right. like you said with the Bull Durham. Like, yeah. oh, I'm just here because God has given me, and I'm Another all that. Stuff. Play, it's, right. it's the cookie cutter response to everything, right? That and and that's it's what just, I that's what I enjoyed in that because to your point about Brandon Marshall, I am so glad that he has this platform because this mm-hmm. you, you I mean you guys see how many of the things that I try to do with these shows and everything, but mm-hmm. what people don't understand is this is therapy. Period. Yes. This, me mm-hmm. being able to talk and get things out, I can get things out through talking football and things like that. But yeah. I love that Brandon Marshall has that and he's able to come out. And one of the things he was saying, he he wants this to be a platform where he's able to say, I love you. He's able to say, hey, I'm here. Let's talk about this. But, mm-hmm. to, but, but to put a bow on it, to your point, it was just, it just felt like in this political season, Russell was just trying to get my he vote. He was kissing babies. He right. was kissing babies. And I do yeah. have a problem with that. So that leaves me still 50-50 because on one side, I want to remember those great years in Seattle and is he that guy? But then on the other side, I've seen that game. I saw when he y'all played us and y'all looked good yeah. at one point. And then we came yeah. back on y'all and we weren't good last year. We only won four games. So yeah. those are the things that I want to know. Yeah. Can Russ do it? Um, and hey, bl- yeah, like I have some black quarterbacks. Yeah. Have the yeah, have to be that way. If not, they're portrayed yeah. as way worse. And you're very true. Yes, that is very true. I will admit to that. Like they feel like they can't talk about if there are issues or problems. Like they have to be the perfect quarterback yeah. because let's be honest, about fifty percent of the NFL fans are from areas that it's they have different political views sometimes. And so you've got to appeal to everyone across the board. So Russ has taken on this persona as a way for no one to be able to critique him right. about what, cause he's never being, he's not talking bad about anybody. He's not bad mouthing anybody. He's not saying anything about the ownership organizations that own his teams. So no one can really, blame no one could put blame on him for that reason 
Right. And I'm standing here as, well, I'm, I'm the white one in this thing. And I know what people are like. I mean, right. it, it, there are a line of them. We can just go through the line of black quarterbacks that things have happened for things outside their control and they're not playing. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. sad. It's really, really yeah. sad. Oh, I remembered what it was. Brandon Marshall kept trying to get him to talk about the fact that he put his house uh, for private yeah. viewing is what it yeah. was, his yeah. Cherry Hill house. And he kept saying, no, no, I didn't put my house up for sale. I didn't yeah. put it on my city. And Brandon Marshall said, I can look it up on my phone. It's all my, I right. see it on my well, phone. Well, if you, if you actually look into it, his house is not up for sale yet. But he had people come in for a private viewing, yeah. which is what you do at that level in order to find out how much people think your house is worth and mm -hmm. what you think you could sell it for or if you could get a private buyer. So go. he kept talking about how he still this is this is. This is the one thing that I that I just couldn't handle after a while is he's like, well, I still want to play for them. I still want to play for them. I still want to play for Denver. I still want to do this. And it's well, like, he has to say dude, that. it's not going to happen. I know. I know. And and that part with Brandon Marshall was like, so, but can you play with Sean Payton? And he and was like, like oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I was like, dude, honest, okay, come on. Sean Payton can't play with you. And that's the, the issue is like, there it is. <laughs> he can't, he won't play with you. It's right. just not going to happen. And no. uh, this goes back to my, some of this goes back to, I wasn't a huge fan of the Sean Payton. I understood it. It's a business. They wanted to bring somebody in with a lot of experience to try and turn the team around. So I get why Sean Payton got the job, but this kind of stuff is the reason why I was concerned in the beginning. Yeah. So I'm giving him another couple of years to make his own noose. We'll see, right? <laughs> yeah. We'll see. I mean, oh, if he can man. turn Stidham around, I will be like, fine. I'm a Sean fan for the rest of my life. Exactly. So. And the one thing that I 100% agreed with, um, to put a bow on this, that, that he said is winning cures all. If you win, nobody worries about that stuff. It's funny if that we had gone to one postseason game. If we yep. had made the postseason this year, which it's not all on him. There were injuries. There was things that were happening. I also think that the other defenses, the other teams were able to recognize our weaknesses and were able to take advantage of some you of our never should have lost to us. Let's say that right there. Y'all never should have lost to us. We were well, you, you don't want to go there because you know why I think for certain why we lost. Because that was not a catch. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> Among so, other yeah. things. But it shouldn't have been a game yeah. in the first place. Right. And but. And then we lose 70. That's the whole thing. Like when we started yeah. winning, everybody was like, how does this team get beat by the Dolphins 70 to whatever it was? I quit counting mm -hmm. after it hit over 20. 50 and like, went home. Like it just, it didn't make sense. It was the tale of two teams almost. And that's what I really, for my putting a bow on it, I think that's exactly what Russell is. He's mm -hmm. the tale of two halves. Yeah. First half of his career highlights everything now he's at the tail end and unfortunately i don't think he has people advising him like go out on a high note go mm -hmm. out now don't keep far kept going to teams to teams to teams mm -hmm. trying joe montana went to another team for one year and then he didn't do it and he was done mm -hmm. like go out ahead but i also think his career at or this season at Denver was a tale of two seasons. Well, actually, mm -hmm. it's actually a tale of three seasons because the first, the first second half. was good. Yeah, right. and then yeah. the, the tale end was just yeah. like, oh, out. God. Yeah. No, I know it. <laughs> but I think yep. he's a phenomenal quarterback. And yeah. I think he's a really good role model. And I don't say that about a lot of the NFL players. Right. Because what they say and do sometimes can be two completely different things and stuff like yeah, that. And right. yeah, he, well, he, he only talked out one side, but didn't let anybody see inside, which mm -hmm. like Ab said, I think he did that because he knew what could happen if he tried to do something else. 
Right. And right. he and especially had in this day and age where everything yeah. is clickbait and you got everybody coming out roasting everybody. Like in in, yeah. in that regard, I thought he answered the questions well because there was a number of mm-hmm. questions where he's still in the middle of a lot of this con- contract talks and controversy. He could have easily been like, nah, man, they did me dirty, blah, 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 blah. But mm-hmm. he laid out yeah. the situation as it was and as it pertained to him. And he said, essentially, you make your decision on it. But he, he was forthright in that. But to your point, man, he just did not button down on the certain things. He didn't come openly. And I know he couldn't on certain regards, but it just leaves you with more questions than answers. Or you lose because you're not able to hit a player. Just say, look, I was bad today. And that he would never do that. He'd never do the mea culpa. He would never be like, look, I'm the quarterback. I'm he would do it, but it would be along the lines of, well, we just didn't quite get it and we'll do it next time. Blah, blah, blah. He'd never actually answer. Were you, what was, is this okay? What's right right here? But again, he's the mouthpiece of the team. So if he said, Anything too differently, we all know Sean had no problem saying, No, you're wrong. That's not <laughs> it. <laughs> and that's what and see, there, there's a lot to this that it's really funny. And and I, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna try to I'm gonna pull this together. We're gonna try. Yeah. You know. <laughs> we come up with something else and we talk again, which is great. Why I love doing the show with you. I love it, right? I love it. Doing each other. I mean, there's so many before you tie the bow. I mean, there's so many reasons why him and Sean don't get along. I mean Everybody knows, like, this was one of the things I didn't like. Like, everybody knows that sh- that um, Russell had his own office and his own quarterback coach, and he was in a separate part of the area and all of this stuff. Well, you know what? Other teams give that to their starting quarterbacks. Right. They yep. do that. A lot of co- a lot of QBs have their own quarterback coach because, honestly, OCs and quarterback coaches don't have time to do fine-tuning on your technique with the quarterbacks. They just need you to understand what the game plan is. There was that. It was the kissing the babies comment. Sean said a lot of things before he about Hackett and all that, all that stuff. So you get all of that. And it just creates this thing that no matter if the, I honestly believe with the press and with click trying to get headlines and clickbait and all of that, no matter what the two of them said, somebody was going to be pitting them against each other the entire season. Cause that gets people to your content yeah. and that's where, and that's where is. we're at. It's a business. Every part of this is <laughs> a business. <laughs> and that, that's the time of the year we're at. That's the part of the season we're at. Clickbait and all that stuff uh, run rampant. I think Mahomes going to win MVP next year. Casey Chiefs need to sign a true wide receiver. I think my tiger to Mike Evans or good talent. I trust Rasheed Rice. Only we need to cut Tony MVS and Sky Moore. This is what I'm going to say to that. The Chiefs are proving that they're turning into the old Patriots. As we saw with the old Patriots, name like three or four receivers on that team outside of DM Branch and Troy Brown. You can't do it. And they have all those rings. That's what the Chiefs are doing right now. They're winning with number one QB. They have a tight end, but they don't need to have all those big pieces that are taking money away from other spots. That's where where I stand. You're you're right there with them. What What do you think about it? Um. Is MVS the one that caught the touchdown in at the, that ended the game? No, no, no. Um, no, the game winner was. Uh, oh, okay. I know who they're talking about. One. I do agree. I think Tommy and MVS and Sky are okay. They do need to get a little bit better. Um, mm-hmm. Oh, it's not. It's they're over the cap by sixteen million right now. With, I'm sorry Hardman. to go with that, and I'll Nicole go back. Hardman the scored. Um, yeah, Hardman. Um, I because their receiving core was a bit of a problem this year. Like team mm-hmm. defenses were able to zone in on a few guys outside Kelsey. Mm-hmm. So I think you guys might have to dip into the free agency and get a Mike Evans or one of those guys because mm-hmm. it's been a couple of years. But Ty, losing Tyreek Hill kind of hurts you guys. It's, but it's Andy Reid and he's a genius and it's Patrick Mahomes. How much has it hurt them? They still won Super Bowls. Like they they find a way. Um, (laughs) Spags had the defense just in a fire. Chris Jones got an extension. So he's already under contract. Um, 
whether they'll franchise tag him. So we don't know. Sneed, Sneed is still up in the air. Mm -hmm. My opinion, if the Chiefs don't get a new deal with Sneed, they're just going to start running roughshod over McDuffie. Like, you need both of them. That's the reason why that team is so good right now, and they don't have to score a lot. Like they used to in the past, where would, if if a Chiefs game was under thirty points, I'd be like, "Well, who is sick?" Now mm -hmm. it's they're scoring 20, 24, 32 in that range, but I think it's because of Snead and McDuffie. Those two together are an amazing. I just and the, you got Bolton shut down linebacker. Corners. You got those linebackers yeah. in there that are they're playing elite. Yeah. Bolton almost won the MVP a year ago in the yeah. Super Bowl. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, and then add in Chris Jones, add in that D line that's very underrated and Spags. Yeah. Yeah. I think they can get it done if Sneed or Jones is Stag. willing to either take a tag or willing to or, negotiate their contract. Yeah, or yeah. here's the other thing, because he's done it before. They get Mahomes to renegotiate his contract and give a little more and get a get a little less in the beginning and take a little more at the end. They might be able to make that work or other people that they let go. So I think it's doable. The question is going to be is what is the price tag for what Sneed? Because yeah. Jones has his contract, so he's okay. Um, Sneed is the one that's going to be interesting. So, But about the $19 million, absolutely. I mean, that's why I personally am not a fan of what is going to happen mm -hmm. because it's going to cost, he's going to cost us 19 million against this cap, mm -hmm. um, which right now we're over by 16 million. So that's like $32 million we got to somehow come up with. And then next year, he gets another, I mean, he gets a guaranteed $85 million from That's the Broncos. Cool. Now, not all of that is cap. About half of it is cap. Half is guaranteed money that were incentives and other things, the injury guarantee, that kind of stuff that doesn't count against the cap. So we're, we're screwed, which I'll let you tie the bow after I say this. The <laughs> reason why when everybody's like, oh, the Broncos are going to trade down to the second position and they're going to get McCarthy or whoever, whatever quarterback it's going to be. I'm like, with what draft capital, with mm -hmm. what cap space, yeah. we don't have that draft Who capital. Are you trading? <laughs> <laughs> like, and they're like, oh, we'll get rid of Patrick Sertan. We just had a conversation <laughs> about why what? and how good those shutdown corners are and you want us to get rid of a generational court quarterback makes no sense makes no sense over two <laughs> years you're right at but it's over two years so it's 2024 and 2025 is what he gets paid out at so that's what he's that's why he's walking away with 85 million God, lead day. These players and their money. And I, hey, I'm I'm not against anybody getting their bag. Absolutely. But once you start breaking it down when it comes to free agency and, and the cap room and all this, and, and let, let's be clear, the cap, as you know it, it, if you look at it today, it's a lie. Because tomorrow, this player will be cut. That player will be moved. They, like you talk about my homes will restructure X, Y, and you Z. You restructure your contracts. That's yeah. the reason why the current structure now is like every three years, the players and the teams are renegotiating in their contracts. Mm -hmm. And what is it's actually in the favor of the players because what they're doing is they're taking some of that guaranteed money and pushing it towards pushing some more towards the back. Well, yeah. what ends up happening is you those incentives or that guaranteed money that got paid out or out of your incentives. Now that allows you to push your salary up. Because if you keep doing well, you're going to be able to get more money. You're going to be able to move up another level and keep going and keep going. It works for both players because the teams are allowed to push things to the back of the contract so they don't have to pay as much up front. And then it works for the players because when they come to negotiate, all that stuff that got pushed back is now being brought forward a bit. Mm 
Right. So it's right. this back and forth thing. It's it's the business part of it, which I have to admit, I, I love. <laughs> and gentlemen, you need to stay tuned for Tina's corner. Wait, the corner office. Do I have that one out of here? Yes, like yes. Uh, do I have that one? Hold up. Give me, give me one second because I know I have it somewhere. Uh, the corner office, ladies and there it is. Yeah, buddy, ladies and gentlemen. So you are definitely going to tune in to that because Tina is going to talk all of the legal uh, aspects of a lot of these situations with contracts, with how the league will take care of suspensions and things of that nature, but also just diving into gambling, diving into injuries, diving into free agent tag, all of these type of things. And and Tina, what uh, you you had said that you were going to focus on what again? Um, I wasn't able to get it done, but I will. I promise you guys, I'll get it out this week. I'm going to look into the Jackson Jack Jackson Jaguar situation and the situation that they have with uh, FanDuel in the terms mm. that they're trying to get some money back from FanDuel mm. because a member of their organization gambled a lot of money with them um i'm gonna say like i said i'm gonna save the tom brady for next week um and i'm gonna look into some of the i want to see like if we have closer when we're starting like we'll start seeing some of these gambling situations that oh, yeah. i want to see if last year's hit which was a rough one for a lot of people if that hit might actually curtail what's going to be happening with gambling. And the other thing I do want to get into a little bit more, and I didn't do it, is I want to get into the PED policy, the performance yes. enhancing drug policy, because it's detailed. It's not something that I want to sit there for 15 minutes and everybody having questions left and right and all that other stuff. But I do want to say this. You have anything legal, questions, contract situations, something like that, let me know. I will look into it. Based on what Ab was saying, I am going to actually look and see if my math was wrong that I did earlier. He might be right. I'm going to check with over the cap and see. Um, <laughs> um, sports agents. Oh, wow. Um, I went to a guy who actually ended up a sports agent and 90% of those guys are lawyers. <laughs> mm -hmm. A lot of people so don't realize start, that most of them are lawyers. So yeah, start so get in, start, uh, start into that law. <laughs> start oh yeah, studying. yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I think there's a little bit of difference. Right. I use over the um over the cap because it breaks it down year by year and actually shows like what is dead money. So the 85 hmm. million that I came up with is the dead money he that the team has to pay him. But dead money also includes his guaranteed money. Some of it is what hits the cap. Mm. So that's mm. kind of where some of those numbers are. But I'm going to look into it, App, because I don't want to say anything that's wrong. It's the lawyer in me. I have to admit and retract if I need to. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, look, we're going to let you go. We are here. Let's talk football breaking news i am sean spencer and i am tina winter we'll see y'all next time stay tuned be cool people washington had no hesitation this offseason they hired bob meyer the special consultant they're taking advantage of the fact that players and celebrities are public figures